Hey everyone, Victor is here and in this video I want to talk about this fun reaction that is probably one of the most iconic and classic mechanisms of the photochemical rearrangements of aromatic compounds. So, as I've mentioned, this reaction is a photochemical rearrangement, so we are not going to be needing any other reagents or anything else, just light. And the first thing that I'm going to do here, I'm going to redraw my starting material and as the photochemical reactions go, the quantum of light that we are going to be pumping into our molecule is going to excite our molecule, creating some radicals. In this particular case, what we are going to be seeing is one of our uh, bonds that we have here, the double bonds, is going to split like so, giving us the corresponding biradical species looking like this. As that disrupts the aromaticity in the molecule, the molecule is no longer completely planar. It is going to start wiggling around and taking various conformations, allowing these radicals uh, to basically start reacting with the other sides of the molecule. Basically, the radicals can start reacting with double bonds across the cycle. And among many possible interactions that we can see here, we are going to see one interaction where one of the radicals let's say this guy over here interacts with our double bond, essentially creating a new three-membered ring looking like this. So what I did here, I made a new bond between this carbon and this carbon and the leftover radical uh, ended up right over here. Now, these two radicals that we have in our molecule right now, they're not going to be just sitting and idling doing nothing. They are also going to recombine. So, this one going to go here, this one going to go there, and that is going to give us another three-membered ring. So, overall, we are going to be looking at this kind of rather interesting looking tricyclic structure. And to make it a little bit easier to reference our atoms here, I'm actually going to label them as A, B, C, and D, like this. So, looking at my original molecule, I have had the atoms A, B, C, and D connected to each other in sequence. But now, we also have a connection between A and C, this connection over here, and we have an additional connection between B and D, which is going to be this bond. And since we have two three-membered rings in our molecule, this guy over here and that guy, this compound, as you can probably imagine, is not particularly stable. So, it is going to be quite susceptible to the bond hemolysis, or in other words, just bond breaking, because we are still shining the UV light at our system and the molecule can easily be excited further. So, the weakest bond in this case is going to be bond between atoms A and B, so, this bond over here, so that's the bond that we are going to break with our next step. So, what I'm going to show here is that the bond splits homogeneously like this, one electron goes to atom B, one electron goes to atom A, and as a result, we are going to get the following structure. Now, to make it a little bit easier to see where all the atoms are, I am also going to bring back my labels, so now we can see we have a connection between A and C, and atom B has been brought to the side as the part of this three-member ring intermediate. Now, finally, this intermediate is going to break up as well, it's going going to essentially open up, so we can show that this electron goes here, this electron goes here, this one goes there, and the last one goes between B and D like so, giving us our final product. And I also keep all of the labels as well, so you can see which atom is which, so it's a little bit easier to see. And the really cool thing about these reactions is that it can keep on going, moving the groups around the ring, and the longer you let the system cook under the UV, the more possible products you are going to get in the system. In this case, of course, we're not going to get too many possibilities, there are just three possible products here, but in general, you could potentially get a lot of different 
different products, if instead of, let's say, two methyl groups, you had uh, maybe three different groups on your molecule or something like that. But eventually, the system is going to reach the equilibrium between all possible variations before, of course, it's slowly going to start making tar from just radicals interacting with each other intermolecularly, making larger and larger molecular entities, which are just going to drop down as tar precipitates. But if you are going to stop this reaction in time, you are going to see all those different uh, products that are the result of this uh, type of photochemical uh, transformation, this rearrangement. Pretty cool, right? If you ever take a course in chemical photochemistry, I can promise you this is going to be one of the first reactions that you guys are going to learn in that course. Now, next week, I want to look at the following reaction, which you might have seen in the second semester of organic chemistry. This looks like a simple acyl substitution, and you probably think that this is going to be the product here. <laughs> well, the reality is, as always, a little bit more interesting than the undergraduate textbook. In reality, we are not going to be getting this guy, but instead we are going to get these two products. So, can you figure out how that might have happened? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. Check out this video next, and I will see you next time.